So what is the world's best fishing lure? We're going to answer that question along with the reasons why and the nuances that are very important for catching more and bigger fish with them. We also have our current guide reports. We're going to cover some fishing tackle for this time of year and much more. This is Angling Buzz brought to you by Omnia Fishing, a smarter way to shop for fishing tackle. We're diving deep into one of the best lures in the entire fishing world. Simply put, it's the jig. This is a universal presentation that can be used to catch just about any freshwater game fish. And there's a lot of subtleties to think about with jigs. The color of the jig, the weight of the jig, which is gonna affect the drop speed, the size of the hook. Does it have a stinger hook attachment? Does it have a weed guard? Are you gonna use soft plastics with it? Live bait, you gonna fish it just out of the package? Well, on that last point, hair jigs have made a resurgence recently, especially in the bass and walleye world. Today, we're joined by James Linder, who I know is a big time jig fisherman. No question about it, Troy. Jigs are definitely one lure of choice for just about every different species of fish that swims. Anything from stripers, hybrids, white bass, largemouth bass, smallmouth bass, northern pike, bluegills, crappies, walleyes, you name it, jigs catch them. Uh, let's start out with walleyes. You know, in recent years, there's been a, a really big thing, as you said, on, uh, with hair jigs and soft plastics for walleyes. One thing that's vitally important when you're talking about fishing um, hair jigs or soft plastics for walleyes is how you fish them. And what I mean by that, most of the time when pe people throw like a jig and a minnow, they're fishing it very, very slow and methodical on the bottom. You're fishing it just at a real slow cadence. A lot of times when you're fishing with soft plastics or hair like this, what we're doing is fishing the bait far and away more of an erratic retrieve. We're letting it hit the bottom and we're popping it off the bottom really quickly. Let it hit the bottom and pop it off the bottom really quick quickly. What you're trying to do is to trigger a response mechanism for walleyes. When you look at a walleye, they got really big choppers. They're a pretty aggressive predator. And you know, so many different people finesse fishing with live bait or live minnows. But when you're fishing with jigs for walleyes, specifically hair jigs or soft baits, you definitely want to fish with more of erratic behavior. Yeah, speed is important. Now, focusing on largemouth and smallmouth bass, there are a lot of different types of jigs out there. We're talking about football head jigs, swim jigs, dock skipping jigs, and even punch jigs for fishing in dense weed cover. You know, and throughout the course of a year, I fish every one of those types of jigs, just based on one thing that you have to understand about jigs for bass, they're very, very specific, presentation specific. In one jig that I tie on, in the spring and it never comes off the entire year specifically for bass is this one here it's a swim jig i actually have a, a big bite pro swimmer on here the nice thing about this particular bait is you can fish it in a wide variety of different ways one thing that's vitally important to catch fish is to find fish and that's one thing that's really efficient with swim jigs in the fact that you can cover a lot of water really really quickly i'm going to cast it out reel it down give it a quick quick pop and let it run more or less right over the depth of whatever type of cover i'm fishing around what could be around the edge of pads it could be around the edge over over coontail mats or various types of cabbage weeds. No question about it, a swim jig is definitely one bait you want tied on the deck. Uh, the other one that I have tied on, the same thing early season, throughout the summer, throughout the fall cold water period, is this right here. And it's a very, very simple bait. This is a VMC Half Moon finesse head with a five inch stick worm on it. This is like a, a, a stick worm profile. It just catches fish in so many different various conditions. This is one of those uh, presentations that's the opposite end of the swim jig. I'm gonna throw it out and just let it sit on the bottom, fish it extraordinarily slow, slow dragging retrieve. You can throw it in, in and around weeds. You can throw it on hard bottom spots. You can throw it on rocks. It's just a really extraordinarily versatile uh, bait. Wherever bass swim, most bass anglers have this stick worm in a finesse head presentation tied on one of their rods for good reason. They catch fish, lots of lots and lots and lots of fish. Yes, and it's important to note the head design, the size of the hook and the line tie placement that play into how and where it's used. Now, what about panfish jigs? Uh, you know, panfish jigs, uh, you know, there's a total ton of them on the market today. They're fabulously effective spring, summer, and fall for catching panfish. Right now, I actually have a, a big bite crappie slab tube 
This is one sixteenth of an ounce, but they, you know, about an one eighth to one sixteenth of an ounce is a real critical weight. And you know, throughout the summer months, a lot of times what I'm going to do is to take this bait and literally cast it out and let it sink down along the edge of the deepest weeds. And what my goal is to do is to take it and swim it right through the edge of the deep weeds. It's fabulously effective for catching panfish and crappies throughout the summer months. Jigs are one finely tuned machine for catching fish. Whether you're swimming them, bouncing them on the bottom, dragging them on the bottom, or swimming them high in the water column, they simply catch fish all season long. As you can see, there's a lot of different varieties of jigs, especially when you start to break it down into species like walleye, bass, and crappie. Up next in our Timely Topics feature, we're joined by Joe Nelson talking about panfish jigs. I tell you, anytime you're fishing panfish, you need a couple different options depending on what they're doing and depending on the panfish species. So I have laid out in front of me four of my must-haves, depending on whether you're fishing these baits underneath the float or whether you're free swimming them. So let's start with the baits that I fish underneath the float. First and foremost, the Firefly jig needs mentioning. I tell you, this jig has been absolutely wonderful to me for bluegills of all shapes and sizes. I've caught a lot of perch with it. Uh, it works good for crappies as well, but as a bluegill jig, it's really second to none, especially just before the spawn, even into the spawn. Fishing this bait underneath the float is really nice because they're very small jigs, they're very lightweight, they tend to sway and swing down underneath that bobber. So that's the Firefly jig. Number one in my must-haves, especially for bluegill. And then there's the Gypsy jig. Now this one's been around a long time and it's caught a ton of crappies. Now that Gypsy jig is again another wonderful bait for underneath the float. Works so well for spawning crappies up in the shallows, in the bull rushes. This bait is really synonymous with so many northern tier states and catching crappies during the spawn that you couldn't go ahead and list a group of baits and not have the gypsy jig be towards the top of that list. So those are the two float baits. Now when it comes to free swimming, I'm gonna go to a bait that they literally at the local retail store sell thousands of every spring. It's the Mimic Minnow. <laughs> it's a very simple design. It's pre-rigged, it's pre-packaged. You can get it in a variety of shapes and sizes and colors. So it's really nice if you're fishing trophy crappies or even if you're fishing smaller panfish, perch, even bluegills will eat this thing in the smallest size, which is 30 second ounce. Again, that's a great free swimming bait once things warm up a little bit. And then here is an absolute crappie killer. It's the Thumper King and it's got this small little blade and I tell you what, whether you're trolling this bait and that blade is moving seductively underneath this bait or whether you're casting it and you've got that curly tail that's rippling back behind it, you're going to catch fish with this. It's an absolute dynamic crappie jig. So that rounds out my very top panfish baits, whether you're fishing them under a float or you're free swimming them. Now, whether you're using jigs for panfish or walleye like Jake and Jim are using, you know, there's a few things to consider. Weight, color, and line choice. He's nice. Oh, there you there go. We go. Now you're talking, big boy. That's what we're looking for. So one thing Jim and I have been playing around with today is our weight of our jigs we're using. So uh, we've kind of found today that that one eighth size is kind of that sweet spot. But you know, some days it might be that one fourth ounce. Uh, you might go lighter with a one sixteenth ounce. Why that matters is it's going to be the fall rate of your bait. So you'll have different actions and it'll trigger different fish. Um, so just playing around with that help you you know kind of home in and figure out what these fish want. Another thing we've been doing you know is playing around with the color. So right here we've got Big Bites, Suicide Chat, Jim's got a few of those on. I've been rocking with the VMC Bucktails. Uh, I was using Neon Chartreuse earlier. Um, now I'm going to go to black. I'm really seeing what those fish want, seeing, you know, trying to match the hatch and keying on what those fish are eating. You know this shallow water fishing is really stealth and it's everything from your presentation, your boat control, and then you look at my line here and it says, why in the world do you have bright yellow line on? Well, the biggest thing is for strike detection, but one thing you'll notice here, I actually have about a 15-foot piece of Invisalign uh, fluorocarbon, eight-pound test fluorocarbon line, so I have a really long uh, length of it on there, so it really gets that br bright colored line away from the bait that you're throwing. A lot of this type of fishing, at least popping these uh, hair jigs and uh, 
swim baits are uh, is slack line fishing. What I mean by that, I hit, it's hitting the bottom and I'm popping it up and letting it fall. So I'm, I'm not staying in really tight contact with the bait, but what that bright colored line enables you to do is actually see the strike. All of a sudden, I'll just see the line jump and I really don't feel the fish hit it. I'll just watch the line up so it'll, it'll tighten up. Oop, there he is, better one, big one. There's a big one. I do like braided line. It is much easier to see. There's different colors like high vis yellow, a bright blue, or white line. I use it for everything from bass, panfish, walleye, and trout. It's easy on the eyes and definitely great as a strike indicator. It's time for this week's Buzz Bite Report. To kick it off, we're going to join Johnny Candle in Devil's Lake. Fishing is heating up with the weather just as we could expect. This week sees water temperatures rising, the shallow back bays as high as the low to mid 60s, and the main lake low to mid 50s, and you can find water temperatures anywhere in between. Follow the wind, it's gonna lead you to the warmest water. Get up shallow, take a quarter ounce jig head, and put your favorite white, did I say white, swim bait on it. Cast it up in the shallows and retrieve it back to the boat Vary your speeds and your cadence until you get bit and do that for the rest of the day. You're gonna find just about every species of fish in the lake up there. The white bass, the northern pike, and the walleye are biting. Warmer days later in the day, the afternoon bite's been a little better than the morning. Grab your swim baits, grab your jig heads, and get to Devil's Lake now. Thanks, Johnny. Now let's head to Minnesota to Lake Vermilion with Billy Rosner. Uh, the crappie bite's going really strong in those south face and soft bottom bays. Get out there in the afternoon after you get done chasing some walleyes. Uh, the walleye bite, uh, the most productive has been those deep water holes, those troughs, 25 to 32 feet or so. Uh, like a VMC moon eye jig just tipped to the rainbow minnow beat in the bottom. But with these warmer water temperatures, those post spawn, those bigger fish are going to start dispersing a little bit and the bite will really pick up on those. How I like to approach that is, I like throwing this Storm 360 swim bait. It's a lot of fun, it's almost like smallmouth bass fishing. I just pitch the shorelines, work it in, there's really no right or wrong way to fish this. Kind of let the fish tell you what you want and you're going to pick up a multi-species too doing this. You're going to catch bass, pike and some really nice walleye. So don't forget to try that. Have a great week and be safe out there. Thanks, Billy. Now let's head to Leech Lake with Toby Cavallivog. The water temperatures are varying from the low 50s, 49, 50 degrees, even found water temperature as warm as 70 degrees yesterday up in the steamboat, the dirtier bays, while chasing some crappies. The crappies are up shallow. They're where they're supposed to be in the afternoons. Let the water warm up, fish them in the afternoons, and you're gonna catch a lot of crappies. Um, the walleyes, which everybody went for, of course, on opener, were were scattered around the lake. There was different reports. Some people really whacked them. Some people caught a few, but here's how we did. Starting off with your traditional jig and shiner. We had the uh, tungsten jig from Northland. This is a 610. Use that with a shiner. And as the water warmed up, I started to find them in the weeds. When it gets sunny on Leech Lake, you want to find dark, dirty water with weeds. Then we switched to a bobber. Just a standard bobber, about four feet down and six feet of water. Uh, the fish started eating bobbers. Uh, jigs on a bobber with uh, leeches and and of course in the afternoons too we also had some luck pulling just standard lindy rigs so leeches bigger minnows pulling them in the 10 to 12 foot breaks produce fish hope to see you up here thanks toby now let's head a little further south to the alexandria area with joe segura saturday morning we ended up catching our fish in three to ten foot of water uh, jigging a minnow lindy rigging a minnow um, or a plastic and a jig uh, seem to be the top three baits. And so in those shallower water, uh, we didn't ride our boats right over the top of the fish a lot of times, we were casting to them. Um, those fish are there all day long. Um, even with some calmer w uh, weather that we've had since then, uh, you can go up and read those fish in that shallow water um, with some side imaging and you can pick those fish out. Uh, but they will not bite uh, until we get a little closer to the evening or we go in the morning. So um, if we can get some wind like we do again today, uh, those fish will uh, definitely bite a lot better during the day. So when it's calm, I would concentrate more on that early morning or um, all the way to the evening uh, for your best bite. Uh, this bite's going to continue for us for another uh, few weeks and then uh, it'll start transitioning uh, over to some deeper water. Thanks, Joe. Now let's head over to Michigan with Captain Ron Dolm Jr. 
Right now, the Grand Traverse Bays are heating up pretty well. The lake trout fishing and cisco fishing on the bays is really doing well, throwing blade baits in anywhere from 20 to 60 feet of water. Primarily more lake trout than cisco, but if you head north up towards Elk Rapids, there are better cisco catches being had. As we move out to the big lake, we're seeing great salmon numbers still in Ludington, Manistee, and Frankfurt. Medium to standard sized spoons thrown on uh, lead cores anywhere from 30 to 70 feet of water is really producing great catches of mixed bags and good variety of king sizes from adults to two year olds and three year olds. And as we come back to the Grand Traverse Bays for smallmouth, the waters are really heating up well. The fish are starting to push shallow depending on the day. Be sure to cover a lot of water and don't stop until you find fish. Get out and enjoy the great weather and we'll see you guys next week. And now it's time for our cool products brought to you by Omnia Fishing. And we're going to start out with the hybrid swim bait jig from VMC. As you can see right here, they have a nice spring keeper. This hook is designed and this jig is designed for swim bait fishing. The hook is wide gap. You thread the swim bait on and you thread it around, it stays on there. One of the problems with swim baits is they can get pulled off the jig depending on the bites or short bites. This will make your soft plastic last a lot longer. There's a variety of different sizes available in this jig. Nice 3DI, strong VMC hook. A great jig option for swim bait fishing from VMC. And speaking of swim baits, up next is the Suicide Shad from Big Bite Baits. This is their three and a half inch version of this swim bait. This is great for bass and walleye. They have bright colors like this, which are perfect for smallmouth bass or walleye. You can slow roll this, snap jig this, and you can see as the bait kind of narrows down near the tail, it has a lot of action. They have bright colors again like this. They also have more realistic bait fish patterns too. The Suicide Shad from Big Bite Baits. And next, the Deep V Jig from Northland Tackle. This features a keeled deep V design that tracks straight and it falls fast. This is great for snap jigging. You can see the design of the head right here. It has realistic 3D eyes as well as a barbed wire keeper to help keep soft plastics onto the bait. And their sizes from 1 16th ounce, which would be great for panfish, and up to a quarter ounce and even 3 8 ounce. That would be great for deeper fishing or fishing in current. Nice bright colors like this. Perfect for smallmouth bass, walleye. The Deep V Jig from Northland Tackle. And next from Bubba, the six inch hook extractor. Now this is important for both the safety of the fish and the angler. It has a non-slip grip and this is important when you're dealing with treble hooks, deep hooked fish, and as you can see right here, the stainless steel tip in here, you can reach down into the fish, unhook it both sides, unhook it safely. And it's made with the same great material as all the Bubba tools. The six inch hook extractor. And next, the Daiwa Tatula MQLT 2500 spinning reel. This features a one piece body with no screws, making it lighter and it helps to keep dust and water out. Also, it features a larger gear, which means increased torque and increased power. It also has an air drive bail for precision line flow. This is a fantastic reel for just about any fishing situation. The Daiwa Tatula MQLT 2500. And from St. Croix Rods, the newly designed Avid Walleye Series. This one is perfect for jig fishing. It's six foot, eight inches in length, medium power, extra fast action. You can see kind of the nice split grip cork handle on here. High quality components from St. Croix and a great option beyond jig fishing as well. I'd fish jerk baits with this, crank baits with this, but especially snap jigging for walleye, this is it. The Avid Walleye Series from St. Croix. These products and many more are available at omniafishing.com. And up next, it's time for our technique of the week. Over time. Well, this is really nice. I got this case that came with it. Before I leave, I'd throw some Ziplocs. I just throw Ziplocs in there, you know, so we can put our fillets in there afterwards. So I'll just set those off the side. But we better get cranking here. Huh? I grew up fishing, doing this a lot, and at the, there was a time when I wanted to be really fast, but I actually, you know, slow down. I take pride in getting, you know, just really make getting the perfect fillets off of these things. And these knives are super, super nice. Once you get on to cleaning with an electric knife, you can become really efficient with it. These fillets are coming out really 
white and nice. Before we brought him in here, James went in here with the Bubba scissors and cut him right here. And that bleeds him out, and that really improves the filet. Got all the hides off. Now I'm just gonna go back and remove all the rib cages. I'll show you another little trick. Once you get the, you just kind of flip it up. Once you get it going about like that, you can flip the filet over and put your knife right here and peel it off. Okay, so the final step, I'm gonna take the skin down here part way and then back the knife off and cut the skin. And what that does, that leaves the skin on there. So if we, if we get checked on the way home, this is required by some states. And when Jim gets home, he's got, a, he's got room to work. He can go in there and just take that off of the knife. If I just cut straight down there, he'd have a hard time getting the knife back in there. It's really hard to get that skin off. So that's about, that's what you want for transportation right there. Boom. Yeah, an electric knife can make filleting lots of fish very easy. And who doesn't like fresh caught walleye? There are links below in the description for the products featured in today's video. We also have a sweepstakes going on right now. You can win a fabulous weekend up on Lake Vermilion. All expenses paid a guided fishing trip with myself and also a hand-selected tackle pack from Omnia Fishing. There's a link in the description as well to enter. We can all help to prevent the spread of aquatic invasive species. Remember, anytime you're leaving any body of water, clean, drain, dry. And if you have any questions about jig fishing, let us know below in the comments. And here's another video from Angling Buzz.